In this HVAC training video, we're going over checking the charge and what pressures an R22 air conditioning system and an r 4 a air conditioning system operate at. So we're gonna be going over the pressure on the low side gauge and also on the high side gauge, and we're gonna be going over those ranges. Now those ranges are patterns. You gotta remember that because it's gonna be based on the indoor heat load for the low side gauge and for the high side gauge, which is the red gauge, that's gonna be dependent on the outdoor heat load. So it may be 70 degrees, it may be 120 degrees outside. So there's a lot more to this than just getting pressures on the low side gauge and the high side gauge, but I am gonna give you the ranges of the normal operation so that you know it should be within here to here for a system that is accurately charged. So the first thing to know is that you have to let the system run for say at least 10 minutes before checking the charge. It's really gonna depend on the metering device as well, if you have a TXV or a piston, but for the blue gauge, which is connected to the large vapor line, you're typically gonna see for R22 a pressure of 58 PSI to 85 PSI. If you're below 58 PSI and you're like 55 or less, that indoor coil is gonna freeze there is a problem, it could be a multitude of problems. It may not just be a low refrigerant charge and you need to check some of our other videos in reference to that. For the high side gauge, it could be between 120 PSI and 300 PSI. And it really depends on the outdoor temperature, the outdoor heat load. And that is a wide range, right? That's not very helpful. Now for R410A, the low side gauge, it should be between 102 PSI to 145 PSI. Once again, if you're below 100 PSI, that indoor coil is freezing. And I'm gonna tell you why. If you take a look at a PT chart, so we have to be able to implement a pressure temperature chart anytime that we're checking the charge of an air conditioning system. 102 PSI equals a saturated temperature of about 32.5 degrees. So say you're at 97 PSI, that equals 30 degrees. What that's telling us is that the saturated refrigerant traveling through that indoor coil is below the temperature it takes for water to freeze. And you gotta remember there's water in the air crossing that coil. So as the humidity in the air crosses the coil, it'll freeze onto that coil and turn it into a solid block of ice. So we really have a range of operation on that low side gauge of like 43 PSI. But it's more important than just kind of getting it in the middle. So it's not a matter of like, hey, it's 80 degrees outside and I should set the indoor pressure at this and the outdoor pressure at this. It's not that way, no matter how much somebody wants it to be. In fact, for R410A, you could be ranging on a pressure of 200 PSI to all the way up to 480 PSI. You can't guess that range. And the reality is if you do, the system's gonna run either inefficiently or it could be overcharged and you could have saturated refrigerant entering that compressor. And what that means is you don't have fully vapor refrigerant entering into the vapor compressor and it'll just kill the compressor. So in order to get these pressures right, we need to convert them to temperatures. And so when we're converting these to temperatures, there's also another layer that we need to take into consideration and that is what metering device does this unit have? So before you even turn the system on and check the refrigerant charge with the gauges, you need to see what metering device is in that indoor coil. So if it's a piston, then we're really gonna be relying on the pressure on the blue low side gauge and the temperature on that large vapor line. And if we have a thermostatic expansion valve, then we're really gonna be relying on the red gauge and the temperature on that small liquid line. So we use the subcooling method to check the charge of a system with a TXV, and we use the total superheat method anytime we have a piston with the blue gauge and the temperature on the large vapor line. So what I really want you to get out of this is the pressures need to get converted to temperatures. And once we do that, it doesn't really matter what refrigerant we're dealing with anymore, whether it's R22 or R4 tonight. We take that pressure and we convert it to a saturated temperature. So let's go ahead and do an example with R4 tonight with a TXV metering device. What you need to know about a TXV metering device is it's going to handle the temperature and pressure on the low side gauge. So we really need to check on the high side gauge. So if we have a pressure on the high side gauge of 318.5 PSI, we need to convert that to a saturated temperature for r 4 a And we can do that either with the gauge face, a calculation tool on your phone, or on the PT chart like we show here. And that converts to a saturated temperature of 100 degrees. So if we read 90 degrees on that small liquid line, you take 100 degrees as a saturated temperature in the middle of that outdoor coil, minus 90 degrees on the tube exiting the coil, and you're left with what's called 10 degrees of subcooling. Now you compare the actual subcooling to what's on the rating plate for the outdoor unit. 
And in this case, we have a TXV subcoin of 10 degrees. So these outdoor units may have a range, may have maybe three target subcoins or maybe just one target subcoin. And you're gonna need to follow that. That's the average target subcoin for the unit. Now, in this case, we have 10 degrees of subcoin. The system's calling for 10 degrees of subcoin, so we are accurately charged. So if we were anywhere from, say, 7 to 13 degrees of actual subcoin, that is within 3 degrees of the target subcoin, and that means that we're accurately charged. I'm going to be going over two other scenarios, the undercharge and the overcharge scenario, but you have to realize that a thermostatic expansion valve is going to control the pressure and temperature on the blue low side gauge. So it's not gonna matter if you add refrigerant into the system, that blue gauge isn't even gonna rise. So you can't check the charge and think that, hey, I need to raise my pressure on the low side gauge, so I'm gonna add refrigerant. It's not gonna happen with a thermostatic expansion valve. All you're gonna do is you're gonna increase the subcoin on the high side. So you could accidentally overcharge a system. Now I wanna go over these other two examples. If you had 96 degrees on the small liquid line and you still had 318.5 PSI, the 318.5, converted to a saturated temperature is 100 degrees minus the 96 degree line temperature and we're left with four degrees of subcoin. Well, that system would be undercharged because we don't have enough subcoin. It needs more refrigerant in the system. In another case, say we have 318.5 PSI converted to a saturated temperature of 100 degrees and we have a line temperature of 82. So we take 100 degrees minus 82 degrees and we're left with 18 degrees of subcoin. And that means that that system is overcharged. So we'd have to have refrigerant removed out of the liquid line while the system's running. If we needed to add refrigerant because the system's undercharged, we have to put it into the low side of the running system. So there's a lot of things involved with checking the charge and you even wanna check the airflow before you even get started. So. I want you to be aware of all these scenarios, so make sure you check out some of the free articles we have over at our website at aecservicetech.com. We go over the subcoin method, the total superheat method, we go over operating pressures, we go over a lot of those issues, and we also have a refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. So that's available on our website and also on Amazon. And we have the full outline at acservicetech.com slash acbook. We go over all the old rules of thumb and why you shouldn't use them. And we go over the preparation of a system for refrigerant, checking the charge, and also all the troubleshooting scenarios that you could run into in the field. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.